because of the bump sale kings here be jimmy in it hey guys welcome back to another video welcome back to the channel if you're new here hit that subscribe button so you do get updates to new videos we're going to be talking about a lot of traveling i've been getting a lot of requests for this video the content creator that made it worked at a school called amg out in saigon she's an english teacher or she was when she worked there me i, I worked part of the stem engineering program so i taught science stem biology uh, chemistry and physics so i thought this would actually be a really good video to compare our differences to give you a good insight i'm just going to do snippets of each little part that she talked about and give you my two cents on it let's get to this video the biggest pro for emg is the salary any other company that's kind of in the same realm of what they do which is a company that goes into public schools or even language centers are kind of clumped together it definitely does have the highest salaries for schools like apex or ila i have friends there who make around i think 30 to 35 mil to start off with and at emg you start off with 45 to 50. when you worked in the english department you were normally getting like 30 to 40 million to start on as long as you had your TEFL and your degree. In regards to engineering, you usually got, or I'm gonna say science, when I say engineering, I mean science. I did the engineering part of it. When you come into the science department, they usually pay you a little more upfront because it's a more demanding position and you do a lot more. To agree with her, to an extent, you do make between 50 to 60 million a month being a science teacher. I got a friend of mine that works there that's making almost 100 million. And I do agree with her. The pay at EMG is probably some of the highest in most of Vietnam. The next pro is the fact that EMG can bring you in during the pandemic, which a lot of companies cannot do. This part didn't really age that well. COVID's over, the restrictions are over. If you are trying to come out to Vietnam today or any day forward after this video, bring your EV. So that's really all you need anymore. In regards to what she was talking about, how the company doesn't cover a lot of this stuff when you got here, the quarantines, if you did go through that. I don't know why people were doing that, honestly, because Vietnam was getting shut down. Even EMG was pretty much limited to where they're trying to do everything online. If you were coming out to Vietnam you weren't gonna get paid a lot probably unless you were there before the pandemic and they kept you on a salary base in, in regards to that never expect a Vietnamese company to cover things like this another pro is the fact that you don't have to do any lesson planning or grading it's a huge pro because it doesn't really require any prep time basically how it works is everything's in the folders on the computer so you'll just upload it onto the usb drive that you have bring it to the classroom there's powerpoints worksheets everything there for you so once per semester there will be like a testing like week and you'll have to grade papers during that time but it's only one week in regards to english this is pretty true everything is done what, what happens is during the office hours everyone's required to make certain amount of lesson plans per week or during like the summertime or something like that and they get looked through by the staff and then approved and then they're downloadable for anybody that it's a really cool thing now in the science side it's a little more dynamic it's constantly changing we couldn't have that freedom or that ability because the lesson that we wrote for last semester just wouldn't fly to the next semester because books got changed, uh, regulations changed on what kind of experiments we could do. So if you are an English teacher, 100%, everything's going to pretty much be there for you. I mean, hell, they give you the laptop if you need it. They give you everything you need to do your lessons, which is a really cool thing about EMG. And the last pro I'm going to talk about for working for EMG is the free lunches that they provide every day. They're not necessarily the best lunches. A couple of them are pretty tasty and they're pretty basic. Um, a lot of people opt not to do it, but I, I did it every single day. And then if I just happened to not like it that day, then I would just order other food. But it is nice to have that option of not having to pay for lunch. And for her final pro, the food in EMG, it's not bad. It's actually made by an outside company. So this isn't school food. How it works is you come in Monday morning to the reception desk through the front door. There's a little notepad there in the English department side. And you just find your name on the form and then there'll be a, a little like piece of paper that says one through five like number one is rice and fish number two is rice and cheese and number three is rice and dog i don't know whatever it is you pretty much for monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday you just write a number corresponding one to five and then every day between 11 and one this company brings the food puts it into the back room area and you get your free food and she talked about going out to the area you are in district three which is very close to district one and you're in a very touristy business area so there's a lot of food options i used to go actually right outside across the street next to compass school and there's a guy there that, that had misao ball and it was like twenty five thousand for a big old thing so
First con I'm going to talk about is the fact that you have to pay for your own flights and quarantine when you arrive. So like I mentioned in the pros, they are one of the only companies that are able to get you in, which is awesome. They don't pay for anything, so it's super expensive to get here. And then the quarantine, which I'm actually lucky because I was able to quarantine with my boyfriend, which made the price a little bit lower, but it was still $1,500 between the two of us. Like her second pro, she talked about the restrictions coming into Vietnam and the company not paid for stuff. This is another one too. The very end of it she kind of talked about a good point coming to vietnam during this time was a hard time but she mentioned having money saved it cost her a couple grand you know go through the hotels because what they were doing is they were jacking up these prices these quarantine hotels were normally just normal hotels that cost like three or four dollars a night the night that i left vietnam last year when i left before i came back i was actually in a hotel that was going to be used for quarantine and that night at like 3 a.m the police came in and started kicking everybody out which was insane because we we're like literally homeless now the hotel refused to refund us but her advice though of having a couple thousand dollars 100 when you come to vietnam you should have two or three thousand dollars expect to come here and not do anything enjoy the culture go see the sites but go do that touristy stuff and enjoy it uh don't ex don't think oh, i'm gonna come to vietnam and by day two i have to work over i'm gonna starve to death don't do that The next con I'm going to talk about is the office hours. So technically the office hours are from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. You do have an hour and a half break for lunch. List this as a con because it is a really long working day. So I do know of some other schools and companies that you don't have to sit in the office. You just, as long as you show up for your classes, then you still get your salary, it's fine. You just have to sit for no reason. Like I said, there's no lesson planning, no grading. So you're literally just sitting at your desk just because they want you to sit at your desk. I think the biggest downfall of EMG is they require office hours. You have to stay in the office. There's a, a blower guy over here. You can sneak out. I know there's a few people that live near EMG that would just go home for pretty much half the day if they didn't have classes. But even if you don't have classes, you still have to come to EMG at like seven in the morning. You don't leave till like five. The science department, you're gonna do a little more planning lessons, experiments. Like there's a lot of times where a lot of us science teachers to get together, we do experiments in the lab just to see how it went about and how we could orchestrate it to a good lesson but yeah english because all the lesson plans are already kind of set up for you which is a good thing but it also kind of has a silver lining of a bad thing that you don't have anything to do now i think a lot of schools they do just kind of let you bounce when you don't have a class when i worked at major education when i worked at ila when i worked at the university when i worked at uit when i worked at the ais international school they all kind of just let me leave if i didn't have a class all day this is actually a very big disadvantage for emg is they do this and say if you're making 50 million a month divide the office hours pretty much nine to five by monthly you're actually making like four or five dollars an hour which is really shabby you know what i suggest doing this is what i started my youtube channel actually when i was at emg i started scripting stuff and doing stuff use this time for something that can help you later on in the future nobody works at emg as a career it's just a one or two or three year kind of a thing so keep that in mind unfair schedules for example i worked in fourth grade primary so that means that a standard class is 80 minutes long so if you have just a single class it would be 80 minutes if you have a double class it would be 80 minutes 80 minutes um most people that i talked to either had no double classes or maybe one or two double classes per week um i had six like i had three mornings and three afternoons during the week that I taught 8080. Double classes is a very stupid thing. And I agree with her 100%. It is, it makes no sense. It's exhausting for the teachers, exhausting for the students. After like 30, 40 minutes, you're done. Like everyone's done. I'm gonna tell you, this isn't an EMG thing. So if, you, if you're thinking, I'm not gonna work in EMG because I don't wanna have all these hours in one class, you're gonna be screwed. Uh, when I worked at a school called Major, they had two hour, let me check, two hours and 15 minute classes. And I had like four of them a week. The problem with it is the kids get tired. You can only talk about so much so long. If you're going to like VUS, ILA, any of these schools, universities do it, high schools do it, uh, government schools in general do it, because these classes are normally 45 minutes. But what they do is they clip up two periods together so it turns into 90 minutes, your hour and a half. These do suck, but this isn't just an EMG thing. Do keep that in mind. It's so exhausting. And even on Friday afternoons, I finished teaching at 5.20. So that means by the time I got in the bus, got all the way back, had to, you know, go back to the office, it's way past the time of office hours. Also, sometimes classes start before 8 o'clock. So for me personally, three days a week left the office at 7, um, which means I had to get there at like 6.45. Um, and I'm not compensated for that. That's technically 
I guess just added hours but I don't get paid for that these were the set office hours so why are we having classes before then so I was very lucky with this I didn't run into this problem because science they never really want to do it very late they didn't want to do it very early if you have a class that starts at 7 a.m you do have to be at AMG like almost 45 minutes before anybody else like there's nobody there you can't even get into the main lobby uh, and you don't get paid for that and if you have a class that starts at like 3 45 or something like that you can end up staying later over the actual clock out time and you don't get paid for that either but there is kind of a benefit if you start making it cool with the people there like your supervisors or whatnot like that they'll start allowing you to drive to these schools by yourself you don't get paid for this extra stuff 7 to like 4 30 i think is the time frame that emg expects you there if you come before or after it sucks to you about you know like there's nothing else and it, I, I feel bad for this girl man it sounds like she had a lot of these classes i only saw people have them like rarely it sounds like she got all of them EMG's tendencies to blacklist people. If you do anything that EMG doesn't like, they put you on this blacklist with the government. Basically, it's your name and your passport number, and you have two options. Either you get deported and kicked out of Vietnam, or you have to pay thousands of dollars in fines in order to stay in Vietnam. The most common reason why they blacklist people is if you finish your contract, so you did everything you were supposed to do, you finished out your contract, next year you decide you want to work at a different company, a different school, if you choose to not re-sign with them and you're still going to stay in Vietnam, they automatically blacklist you. So blacklisting is weird. I did a video, check it out up here somewhere, where I talked about people getting blacklisted during the pandemic and being under fake business visas through agents. The story she said about the blacklisted AMG, I don't know if I've ever heard anything like this. So I'm not going to say it's wrong, but also I'm going to say that what she's talking about sounds very Vietnamese. -y. Vietnamese like to kind of screw you over sometimes if they don't get their way and it does remind me of a story when i quit emg you know, i put my notice in everything was chill and i gave them like a two-month notice when i went to go get my final pay they required me to scan my entire passport at the time i had a lawyer that was helping me with a lot of other stuff and he told me that was very weird that a school would be asking for a full passport when you're quitting because there's no reason for it the government doesn't even require that what i did is once i got in there I, sh I gave them the printouts they gave me my final salary everything was fine actually the, the staff was really cool there was no like fights or anything like that as soon as i got out there the i went to the u.s embassy which is like a 10 minute drive away from there and i told them my passport was compromised so i got an immediate i got that passport canceled pretty much immediately i just got my passport number changed because i don't know what was going on and that was a very weird thing even my lawyer was kind of like why are they asking you for this david does emg blacklist people like they just throw everybody in a list and blacklist all 10 people that quit that month i don't know that's insane if they do. I, I hope that's not true. But I mean, that that would be a 100% reason not to work at AMG if that's accurate. I, I think it'd be case by case. I could see them, if you screw them over, they're going to screw you back. That This is what Vietnam does. Uh, they need to have the last screw. Is that how you say it? That could be the case. I don't know. Tell them you're going back to your country. Tell them you're going back to the Philippines. Where, wherever you're going. Just tell them you're, just make it very clear that you're leaving Vietnam. They don't second guess it. Be like, oh, you better backlist this guy. He's going to ILA. You know, I don't know if this is true with EMG. That, that's insane if it is. The whole time that I was working at EMG, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I kind of felt indifferent towards it. So I was kind of like, yeah, you know, they pay pretty well. Sure, do it. Um, but kind of going through that whole process of the re-signing and the blacklisting and just people I knew being affected by that, you might have a really great experience. So on this one, I agree with her. I think EMG is an awesome first job. Negating that whole blacklisting thing, ignoring that, EMG honestly is a really good first job. It, it gives you opportunity to grow. You can work in English. You can go to the science side. The pay is way higher than any other school for having no experience. You don't really get any benefits, but I mean, you get like free food. I guess that's a benefit. Uh, you get free rides to the school that you're going to. The TA will go with you get a taxi it's all paid for by EMG they'll take you to the school they'll bring you back so there's a lot of good benefits it's a good way to learn how the system works if you do need that TEFL you want to learn how that the, the nuts and bolts go check the link below for a TEFL that I'm offering it it's 50 percent off it's the same one I used at EMG and they took it no questions asked it's accepted all over Asia to be honest with you again that blacklisted thing really I, I've never heard of that before it is a great job the, the other people I worked with there are amazing everyone's always trying to help everybody the TAs are really great people but past that guys I think we're good for today so if you did enjoy this video leave a like and drop a comment right under there if you're not subscribed hit that link right under here or hit the subscribe button to follow along I got more videos coming check the link below also to check out her full video i just did snippets of it because i just wanted to get to the meat of it all but check out her whole thing she explains a lot of stuff in detail until then guys i think we're out of here thanks for watching and i will see you 
again. So if you were to ask me if I would ever work for them again, my answer would be definitely.